Hello everyone, welcome back to the next episode of GNA Reviews. I am your favorite lizard man, Drewidu. And I am the co-host that is rendered completely in CG to save budget, Soberoni. Damn, oh, <laughs> wow. Shots you fired! You weren't even subtle. You weren't even Shots subtle. Shots fired! God, let them live. Wow. Welcome back, guys. Uh, to DNA podcast, we talk about all things anime. Uh, this episode is going to be coming out a bit later because we are filming this on Monday because we were dead after the convention. Oh yeah, yeah. So, you guys wouldn't have wanted us to do a podcast after that. We would have probably collapsed mid recording and died. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So sorry about that, but it's going to be fun and cute and whatever as usual. So without any further ado, let's get into our first segment, which is this week in anime. And I'm just going to get this out of the way because we have more important things to talk about. But Banana Fish caused a spike in sales at, oh my god, is someone dying too? The cops want to hear about this. (laughs) Yeah, right? They're like, wait, someone say Banana Fish? (laughs) Um... Anyways, it caused a spike in sales at New York Public Library's gift shop. So apparently, the Rose Main Reading Room is, um, oh, yeah, it is one of the anime's key scenes. It is, oh, I'm remembering (laughs) how important it is. Mm. Yeah, there's like two very prominent scenes that it's in the, oh, that hurts. That take place in the library? Yeah, it takes place in the library. Um, but apparently, the gift shop has been selling more um, $30 miniature replicas of the, of the Rose Room chairs. Mm-hmm. Um, um, according to your post, uh, apparently, that they sold 59 chairs on Saturday, which mm-hmm. I'm assuming is the Saturday. What is it? This is the Saturday of NYC. Nine, the Saturday of nine, okay. actually, because it's posted on the on the fifteenth. Mm. So, oops, and that just went away. But yeah, that's a fifty nine chairs on Saturday, which is a twenty three percent increase from previous Saturday. So, yeah, that's that's a lot. It's you know good on you guys for. You know, helping the New York Public Library thrive, and you know, I hope this will help with your trauma of what happened because I just read it and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Good old anime helping out the New York Public Library. Yes. Now let us move on to a uh, new surrounding Konosuba. The oh, can I say it? Can I say it? What? Can I say it? Go ahead, you first. I was going to let you take it first. <laughs> the uh, Pulp Fiction screenwriter, Roger Avery, actually went to go see the Konosuba movie, and he gave it five fucking stars out of five. And he says, <clears throat> and I quote, It is easily one of the best experiences in the cinema I've ever had. I would go as far as saying it's the reason cinema was invented. So, yeah. The dude who won uh, an Oscar, does, what did he win? Yeah, did he win? For, yeah, he won for a uh, best screenplay with um, um, Pulp Fiction, working with Quentin Tarantino, praised uh, Konosuba's movie. So it just makes me feel even more happy that I got to go see it in the theaters as well, as did Drew. And yeah. we enjoyed the ever loving fuck oh, out of it. Oh my god, it was so hilarious. Like, I literally was... Like I was crying at parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even so. It's not just us weebs that like. It's also a <laughs> award-winning screenwriters who have to acknowledge the beauty of Megumin's explosions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and apparently he is not alone in this sentiment. Um, also, according to Anime News Network, Konosuba movie, it. In the U.S., it earned $1.13 million. Yeah. Now, for some people who are like, what does that mean? It is worth $1.13 million. The movies make so much more than that. Dirty, dirty, dirty. 
Let me rephrase that. It earned that much money in two days. Yeah, in limited screenings. It's not like it aired in every movie theater in the world, in the New exactly. in the U.S. Exactly, and multiple times, the multiple theaters. It was literally one showing on two days in in just a few theaters, and it earned that much money. So, if you were yeah. to, like, average it out, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yes, and on it earned um, about 705 Hundred K on November twelfth, mm. ranking at nine for the day, like the ninth most movie watched for, <laughs> on the day of all the movies. That, exactly, and so. then a how much? Almost, almost basically half a million on November fourteenth, which made it rank eight for the day. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen the Kono Silver movie, I don't know if they're if they're gonna they probably will make it at some point. Uh, they'll show it again or it'll air on Crunchyroll or something. But you guys gotta watch the movie. The movie is fucking great. If you haven't seen Konosuba yet, go watch Konosuba because yeah. it is a excellent, excellent show, excellent comedy. Yeah, and and, and just to give a little comparison, I'm not sure what this says about the U.S. versus uh, Japan about like the movie watching experience, but in Japan, it's only earned about approximately uh, four point seven two million in the U.S. as of September fifteenth. You mean in Japan? In Japan, yes, in Japan. That's kind of so weird. So like, that is weird. Like, we made a, a fourth of that in mm-hmm. two days. Yeah, that's super weird. I wonder if it's. I wonder if Konosuba is more popular in the West than it is in Japan. Because I've noticed, and I was on Crunchyroll looking it up. Uh, all the epis- It's weird because all of the uh, Konosuba seasons are dubbed in various languages, which is hardly ever happens. But it's dubbed in Portuguese, Spanish, English, Russian, French, I think. Like, it's just, like, dubbed in every language. I'm like, Jesus, this is a really popular show. <laughs> so I wonder if it's just more popular in the West than it is in Japan. I feel like the answer might be yes. Mm. Either way, as much as we would love Konosuba, we actually do have a few other shows to talk about this yeah. week. So let us get started with that. That's Starting with review. Mm-hmm. Boku no Hero Academia season four episode five. This was cute. Um, <clears throat> uh, do you know what Nebjide's quirk is? Because she just did a little bunch of spirally lights, and then they just like <sighs> got. It was wrecked. like surges or like electrical surges or something. I wasn't paying attention, but she was. I was too captivated by her pretty lights and shit. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, so yeah, apparently, uh, Ochako and Tsuyu... The Return of Froppy. Froppy, thank you. I was like, what's her <laughs> name? It's so far, her real name's so cute, and it's much better than her actual name. Yeah, it is. Froppy. And I actually forgot that Ochako's uh, hero name was Uravity, which is also really great. <laughs> Uravity is great, but I really like Ochako. It's super yeah. memorable. And Froppy, of course, is better than Sue's real <laughs> name. Exactly. Um, they're working with uh, Ry- Ryukyu, mm. um, who is like one of the heavy hitters, heavy hitter heroes. Mm, alliteration for you bitches. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really exciting. They have like their own super team. They're already doing their team attacks, which I thought was really cute. Um, and then they're also talking about how they're going to be teaming up with Sir Night Eye. Yeah, that was a little bit of a nice bit of uh, foreshadowing there for, I guess, later on in the season. Yeah, we didn't see that, however, because they <laughs> totally just shifted everything and just said, let's see what's going on with, uh, with uh, what's his face, uh, Kirishima, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Red Riot. Which is another hero name I absolutely love. Yeah. Red Riot. See, they have good hero names. They do. Um, I don't get Tamaki's name. That's the last of the big three. <laughs> the Sanin, if you will, I guess. Wait, is it the other student? Or the... Yeah, the third one. You know, there's there was um Mirio. Mm-hmm. There's a... Oh, isn't his name Sun Eater or something? Yes, yeah, Sun Eater. Or I'm just oh, like because he gets power from eating things. I know, but why Sun Eater? Sounds why badass. Sun? Sounds badass. It That's sounds why. Like, 
It sounds like super holy as fuck. Like, it's a good name. It's just kind of misleading. Like, I'm Which... like, oh, Sun Eater. Probably like a darkness <laughs> thing. And then that's when he chops my face off with like this <laughs> cobra. Which, uh, by the way, that's probably one of my favorite powers in the show now. Oh, it, absolutely. It's so creative. It, I was going to say that. Yeah, this is super creative. You literally get powers from what you eat. Mm-hmm. It's super uh, fun. I would... Does that mean, like, if he ate, like, a bear? Yo, imagine he just carries around, like, a bento box with a bunch of different animal parts. And he just eats them to gain different abilities. I mean... Oh, there's so many different ways you could take that ability. I don't... I think once he eats, he just has, he just has it forever. Oh, but... boo. No, he should have... Yeah, he should have it, like, for 24 hours or something. Oh, I feel like that's... that's how it should work. It's balanced that way. Because uh, there's only so many animal abilities. Or animal all the best... All the useful. best abilities... In, in just, well, in Hero Academia, but in general, are usually balanced. Like, you have to have some weaknesses. If he just ate him, get the power of everything he ate, I mean, he's basically fucking Kirby at that point, and he's OP as bullshit. Okay, I mean... Do in that case, I'd be can... a cannibal and just start eating people, fucking <laughs> getting there. No, no, course. see, and I, was gonna, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I don't think you get the powers of, like, the people you eat. You just get their body parts. That was re- that must be really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy, yeah, that you didn't become a cannibal. You killed and ate someone for no reason. <laughs> or I guess ate someone. You don't have to kill them. They could you could just eat their Yeah, you could just you could no, you don't even have to. You could just like it, how much of the person do you have to eat? Maybe you just like cut a sliver of them or something. Well, either way, it would suck if you ha- resorted to such a horrific thing for no reason. Uh, it could be potentially very OP, though. Keep our eyes on Sun Eater. He might be secretly OP and or a cannibal. So we'll see. I mean, that is why he's part of the top three, because they all have really busted powers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so basically, they're all doing their thing, saving, saving crime, being badasses. But then all of a sudden, this dude's like... Out of a, I, it was almost as if it was out of a, oh, what was it called? Not, what was it? Not act. You know, Play. one of those abbreviations. Oh, I was going to say dare, but dare was drugs. So never mind. So like the gun version of dare? Yeah, like the gun version of dare. <laughs> Whatever like, that is. Like, I'm a scared kid. I'm Bullet. A <laughs> Yeah, that that villain was annoying because he kept like going back and forth between like I don't know, I'm scared, I don't know what I'm doing, to being like just menacingly, I'm gonna kill everybody and blah 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 yeah. blah blah. Yeah, blah. it became more like Dare when he actually injected like drugs in his body. Yeah, then it became an infomercial for Dare. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then when the sword came out of his eye, I was like, that was Ew. that was really disturbing. I can't I deal with like, that kind of stuff. Gross, gross. I although I will say. I don't know how the sword comes out of your body, but like when it came out of your eye, I feel like there should have been like blood gushing out, mm-hmm. and just like pierced your own fucking eye. But... Yeah, and is it like an extension of his eye? So if if, if it broke against um, Red Riot, does that mean his eyes just snap? Like, ugh. Yeah. Gross. Maybe it came from like, from like the surface, like below his eye, or from like like from the socket, maybe. Yo, all this, this all like this red talking red. about this is making me really want like a gritty. Watchmen style like remake of Boku no Hero Academia. Oh, uh, I'm just hungry, so I just want food. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, none of this cannibalism talk has der- derived me from that. Yeah, apparently that that's what makes you hungry. Then apparently, yeah, mm-hmm. watch myself around Drew. Okay, yeah, and I'm glad you know. Uh, but yeah, so. But overall, that the episode, especially when it focuses on Kirishima, was really good. Like, I, I like Kirishima as a character. I liked his interact. Like, he had one little scene where he was talking with the other dudes, like with Bakugo in them, about his powers and stuff, and they were trying to cheer him up. I found that to be yeah. a really nice scene. Also, yeah, no, by the way, I'm, they're, 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 I'm shipping them. They're being shipped really oh, hard. They, they already shipped really hard. I'm pretty sure that's like Bakugo and, and him are a thing. I'm I never knew that. Yeah, they always hang out together, and even in like the, uh, really? I keep wanting to call it the tuning exams, but you know, the temporary hero license slash tuning exam arc, they were together in a pair, I think. Really? Mm-hmm. What do you mean together as a pair? Like, weren't they just like hanging out together, fighting other groups of hero students? No, oh, I don't think you know who he is. <laughs> no, it was him, wasn't it? No. Oh, was it Kaminari? 
I think you may have been confusing him with Kaminari because Tamaki is one of the like the big three at the school. They're literally he's literally his senior. No, I was talking about Bakugo and him. Oh no, I'm talking about oh no yeah no Bakugo and Kirishima they're shipped yes yeah no, yeah I know I'm saying that was a new shipping with Kirishima and the big three. Oh well yeah, maybe. Yeah, because at the end where he's like. Saying compliments to him, the guy's getting like all shy and like putting his head down. I was like, oh my god, that's actually really cute. It was. So I'm shipping them, and you know, if anyone knows that anywhere I can get any of that good, that good, good. Yo, now that I think about it, Bakugo shipped with like half the cast. I'm oh, pre- absolutely. He's definitely shipped with Deku. He's definitely shipped with Todoroki. Uh, he's definitely shipped with uh, Ochako. Uh, yeah, after that fight, and yeah. Yeah, like, damn it. Bakugo's out here getting, getting yeah, everybody. Yeah, a dirty <laughs> he's he's stopping everybody. He's a, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's an angsty little hoe. <laughs> 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 uh, Alright, anything yeah, else you want to uh, say? A, no, it was, it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next one. Yeah, the next one should be good. Yes, okay. Let us... Move on to Shugeki no Soma, Shin no Sara. Episode 6. C. Yes? Yep. Yes. Oh my six. god, there's 25 episodes. Holy shit. I know, I'm fucking <laughs> moist thinking about it. Um, but yeah. Was but moist as dish. his dish? His butter dish? His <laughs> butter dish. Uh, I wish I knew kind of how mochi worked. I wish I knew how half of any of these things fucking worked in the show. Yeah, like I just had to, like I literally just had toboki for the first time. Mm. Uh, when we went to a uh, that Korean barbecue spot, mm. like it was like rice cakes. Did you have? Did you try any? Yeah, I had some. Oh, what did you think about it? It was alright. It's alright. I don't know. I thought it was delicious. Like the broth, like it being all sucked up in that broth. It was like this nice chewy, spicy. Broth punch in my face. Anyways, it was it was good. Mm-hmm. Point is, I did I just d- started dabbling with that, so I had no idea what they were talking about when they were using like, the mochi and whatnot. Um, the samurai theme was cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had a surprisingly deep backstory too. Yeah, Saito's backstory was yeah, it was very intricate. Uh, shout out to his mom. Yeah. Fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> Like those asshole sushi chefs. We're sushi chefs. We're gonna fucking <laughs> be assholes and kill this woman. Yeah, I mean, for no reason. She <laughs> wants to learn how to cook. You wanna you wanna touch sushi and rice? You're a woman. You can't you can't fucking <laughs> mold rice with your hands. It's Stupid. not what God intended. <laughs> <laughs> go 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 back in the kitchen. But no. I'm just kidding. That's her wait, no, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, make us a sandwich. I mean, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Give me the kitchen. No, yeah. no, I'm using the kitchen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a. Oh god, it's like it went, it, Oh god, I can just imagine some Japanese tad sushi stuff being like. I would tell you to go there and make me a sandwich, but you're not even useful in there. I feel like that's like Gordon Ramsay, the Japanese Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> a Japanese sexist Gordon Ramsay. Oh. Uh, that should be the final boss of, of uh, Shoku Geki no Soma. It's like a really sexist, angry Japanese Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, definitely. I did like Saito's dish, like the seafood rice bowl with butter. Like, I know both of them are really delicious in theory, so much so that just thinking about it is making me hungry again, mm-hmm. or even more so hungry. But I feel like depending on what I want, like depends on. I feel what like I would like get. um like yeah that looked but I really liked how he mixed it with like like a citrus uh, juice so that it, like takes away the grease. I'm like oh cool I actually yeah. understood that cooking method it made sense. So, yeah no yeah it made sense and also serving it over a bed of sushi rice and I'm like. Bitch, like, I've had some high-quality sushi rice before. Sushi mm. rice. And it 
Like, have you ever had sushi rice so good, Oni, that you literally could just, like, I could just eat the rice and I'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah, a few times where it's just the rice is the best part of the dish. Yeah. Um, I also really like, I actually, I, I, I kind of like how every time they, that Soma's in these fights, he has, like, the most basic dish and it always ends up with, Like, the other person will have, like, the most intricate, beautiful, one-of-a-kind spectacle of a dish and someone would be like, yo, I just made some fucking... Hot pockets in the microwave, but I put butter on top of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, yes! He wrapped the hot pockets in mochi and put butter in it. Ah, ah. That is really not what happened. Oh my god. <laughs> and it's always like a backstory. Like, yo, when I was alone at the restaurant, my dad was cooking, I had to make these hot pockets. So I thought, what do I wrap mochi in the hot pockets? <laughs> it's always so simple and. <laughs> That is not what happened at all. God, I wish I remembered what he co- the name of what he cooked. Mm-hmm. But no, he like he deep kind of like deep fried it. I wouldn't say like a hot pocket, maybe like a croquette kind of. Mm, what he made, but he did it. What he made with the pilaf, a pilaf, pilaf. Yeah, which is actually really like. That's really good. Oh my! Like, All right, let's put this he he dresses up it. really, really common. Yeah, dishes. it was really common shitty food, but he like turned it into gourmet shit. Mm. Like, I feel like a lot of people just look on a lot of these people who like make up these recipes for him just go on YouTube <laughs> and watch other people do it on YouTube, and they're like, ah, they're doing that. But what if? Because <laughs> anime, let's just do this. Yeah, let's just put some rice pilaf on top of that shit. Perfect. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I did like the the imitation white sauce. Is like why it didn't have butter in it mm-hmm. because it butter. Yeah, yeah, yada. Yeah, the that's whole cool. savoriness of the dish. Like yeah, something like that. It's like oh, that'd be so good with like a nice cold beer. <laughs> yeah, that does sound good. Why are you trying to make me hungry now? Yeah, because Misery loves company. Yeah, apparently. But yeah. Um, it w- once again, it's one of those episodes that was good. It was fun of watching. Oh, oh, did you catch? Oh, like, oh. Like, yep, yep, yep. Are you, well, you going to say like, Unlimited Blade Works? Yeah, Unlimited, unlimited <laughs> Food Works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I actually meant to lead with. Yeah, uh, I was going to say Emya. Uh, Soma's unlimited, <laughs> unlimited cooking works or whatever the fuck. It literally looked just like unlimited blade works, yes, like the background and everything. Did. So I think it definitely did on purpose. Someone actually really, let me check something. Really they're not huge. the same. They're not the same. Uh, is it the same voice actor that did Emiya? Can't be. Let me check this real quick. Oh, I would literally faint. Imagine. I, I feel like I should have known Emiya's. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I I was like, there's no way. It'd be awesome if it was. <laughs> that would be super crazy. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, that was a little nice. I like their little. But you see, that's what always makes the show interesting. Like, yes, it's just cooking, but they always like make little references, mm-hmm. and they do like a fucking thing in the background where it's like a samurai fight. They always have a different theme. Like, yeah, remember when he, was, always... he was fighting like a boxing match on the fucking tightrope with uh, Curry dude. Yeah. So. They go out of their way to make it entertaining, which is something I really appreciate. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, uh, so much fun. Like, so much imagery. Mm-hmm. Really entertaining. I really like this anime. Yes. Can't Thank wait for God, the next more episode. There's 20, 20-ish more episodes. 19. Okay, let's go talk about what Oni's been waiting to shit on since the, <laughs> since the beginning of this episode. FGO Babylonia, episode... Seven. Uh, I am not gonna shit on it. I actually like this episode. Not as much as, like, the other episodes that are in the series, because the series is so good. But, I mean, I just have to point out that, that Medusa was, uh, or Gorgon was just pure CG. I think in one shot, specifically, it was really bad. Yeah. Like, the, like the, other, the, other, the other other shots were like, I'll let it go because it's a giant fucking ten-foot steak monster. But... Mm. Yeah, there was one where it was just like it literally looked like on the same bar as like uh fucking strike witches. <laughs> wow, really digging at strike witches now. What a low shot. 
Um, okay, but you notice how you didn't say I was wrong. Low so. blow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that one shot where dude, we had yeah, to I know what you're talking about. CGI I feel like if funny. they if like I understand why they did it because you have to make like her hair move constantly and it's really annoying to animate that. Um, and she's so huge, but I feel like the way you can pull that off is if if it's like a distance shot where she's like in the background, keep it CG. You know, you know it's not too. But if it's an up close shot or like a medium range shot, you might want to draw that because it's kind of jarring. Especially if there's, yeah. like, non-CG people in in the picture that are also, like, when Inkidu was right next to her and shit. And I'm like, okay, well, Inkidu's clearly drawn playing his day, but I have this, like, giant CG snake monster right there next to him. Yeah, you're giving me a uh, fucking Golden Kamui. Yeah, like the fucking bear <laughs> from Golden Kamui. Exactly, the, the bear. <laughs> you just see everyone else drawn, you just see the bear. It looked like someone just, um like, like I went in fucking Adobe Premiere and just, like, Cut and pasted two things that don't belong together in the same in the same video. I'm like, whatever. Animation errors yeah. be damned. <laughs> exactly. So, I expect better with your budget, but fair enough. I, I'm hoping yeah. that they save it for the the fights. If the fights look good, I'm happy. Yeah, the flashbacks with Geisha were they were pretty. I liked how he looked. His design was really awesome. Everything was pretty. Every time Lots they do a flashback, colors. I'm just like, can we please get an adaptation of London now, please? Like, just adapt all the rest of Singularities, because I'm tired of these flashbacks. And then they just make me want the other Singularities. Yeah. Especially America. Please, America. Yeah. I need to see Maeve in all her beauty. Agreed. Uh... Oh, <laughs> That moment where uh, Ushi became a little bloodthirsty for a hot Yeah, that was uh, her, her like, um, crazy mode engaging. Yeah, she's like, hey, this is a preview of what's going to happen to my face <laughs> later they're, on. They're getting the Kakegurui faces ready for <laughs> Exactly. For the and then Ushi literally she goes on the else and she's like... Hmm, I better hurt you back so he can head pat me. And I'm just like, uh. <laughs> She's adorable. There is, and that is kind of true to the game because I remember, I forgot what event it was, but I think it was, I feel like it was, um, Onigashima. But she, she like, or maybe it's in one of her bomb lines. So she cuts a demon's heart out, like gets one of the foreign demon god hearts and just like, or cuts off its head and brings it to you and she's like, head pat me, I brought you a gift. So she is a bit like, <laughs> crazy in a certain way like she's bloodthirsty oh so eh? yeah she's a bit of yandere yeah. he's like i killed this thing master and brought you its head praise me <laughs> <laughs> like i'll give a first put that down <laughs> yeah <laughs> so she's uh-huh. cute yeah she is also someone who is who he, he almost single-handedly made this episode of the week mm. before the first cgi but leonidas looting the mc <gasps> Yes, oh, this is so great. Like, yeah. more attention. <laughs> yes, before you kill him horribly, please mm. more of him looting the MC. He's like, hmm, you need to work your body, and I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Teach you the way of working it out. Yes, gay Spartan sex. It exists. No. I know it did in history. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like that'd be really easy to write into the story. <laughs> Exactly. Like, let Literally, me teach you uh, what, what we yeah exactly. Like let me teach you a way uh, before we go into a big battle. How we Spartans take care of business. Come <laughs> here, Fujimura. That's the ways of being a warrior. Yeah. No, they can definitely work that into the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leonidas is just awesome. I yeah, I, he, was he needs a more attention. Episode, right? Yeah, he's really cool. He's badass. He's cool. He looks out for his friends. He needs more. He's underappreciated. I'm yeah, glad I leveled more, him. More, more Leonidas Dojins, please. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't much, much of the MC. It was a little bit, eh, kind of here and there. He kind of went back to being in the side again. Yeah, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm not complaining about it because the episode is just pretty like still good. It was pretty solid. I feel like there wasn't a lot of mosh either. We had that Merlin Anna. Uh, oh talking yeah, talking seems pretty good. That was actually good. I'm like, this bitch is just out here. Is Stealing dreams. Mm-hmm. Dream eater. And I love Anna being Sundere as fuck. She's like, oh, God, Merlin, why are you making me fucking feel like this? I can't <laughs> wait to kill you. Yeah, that was really great. 
they I'm liking what they're doing so far. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad this is not another last on course situation and we actually got oh, this a is like good adaptation. Opposite. This mm-hmm. is like this is on its way to becoming number one, like yeah. very easily. Fate fate extra had to die for this show to exist, so <laughs> it better be <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> you died pizza, for your sin. As usual, it's always good. This is this episode, in my opinion, a little less good than the top episodes of the series so far, but still solid, still good. Mm-hmm. Now let us move on. If you have nothing else to say about that, yep. let's move on to Hatage Kimono Michi. Episode 7. New cast member. Yes, Miss, uh... Miss... I'm looking... Why can I not find it? Okay, Celeste. Like Celeste, yeah. Yeah. So, I... I love how this... <laughs> this show was... This episode was... It was funny, but it was weird. In what way? Well, I mean, like, all the, besides the usual weird ways that like, this it show was, is weird. Like, <laughs> like, it, it, I feel like it was, it was playing very dangerously to, like, the mm. point of it, of it, me almost getting tired. Of the jokes? Yes, but then it was just enough that they were like, okay, and we're stopping. Like, yeah. they really pushed it. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the one-noteness of the characters this episode. Yeah. I, I, Funny enough, I think the most um, rounded character, aside from Shigure, is uh, Carmilla. Yeah. And unfortunately, the least rounded is Hanukkah. Gen- well, I was going to say Hanukkah, but Genzo too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with just like let's eat. But even then, eat. but even then, that was like, but like it was, it was I, funny. But like when was she was funny, when she like, was directing um Celeste to attack, she's like go for the tender underside of their belly and chew through their intestines. <laughs> that's, 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 that was <laughs> funny. And then when she's was like, here eat this. She's like, I'm a lizard man. I don't. I'm not an actual lizard. I don't eat stuff <laughs> spiders. Like that. Like, More for me. And then Celeste's face as she sees her eat the spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's cute. Yeah, exactly. So like stuff like it was one note, but it was it worked. It worked in it those funny. scenes. Yeah. Um, I think that some scenes were a bit too long, like the the Genzo going into the guild and like being the shit out of everybody and having the like, I feel like that. The kind Genzo of being like, I can't accept it. I can't accept. Yeah, it. like that I going over and over it. and over like, again. I'm yeah, just like it kind of dragged there. Or, or or you can just accept it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Also, it was weird because there was like a lot of action and fighting in it, but it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, the, it's weird because the quality of the fights are so random. Like the orc fight in like episode two or whatever, and the Carmilla fight last episode were really well animated. And then this exactly. fight was just like stick figure time. Bop, yeah, bop. Ching, 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 ching. yeah. Like, I was like very confused. I'm like, why is there so much of this action and stuff going on? But like, it's so whatever like this yeah is see like... that's that's a good way to make a joke is if all these like random fighting scenes or like just random scenes are well animated for no reason which it had been doing up to this point like there's just random scenes every episode that have excellent animation for some reason but it wasn't this episode <laughs> it was not this episode it was like this is literally like fucking uh uh oh what's that anime again wait hold on I gotta give no card <laughs> no no. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. Um, wh- Don Machi. There you go. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, shit. I hate Boner for Don Machi. <laughs> you see, it was worth it. I was like, no, no, let me find it. It's going to be totally <laughs> worth it. It's going to pay off. So, that's. Are you playing like trigger bingo you name strike witches you got don machi you name like I mean, there's no azure lane this week so you can't trigger me there i know i can't I just, but you know what and that's why it was almost my episode of the week because it wasn't there to begin with <laughs> um i can't help but like because i watched this after we saw the Kono suba movie and i can't oh, help to God, like yeah, yeah i was comparing the two which 
it's it's I think it's fair because it's the same author, same type of comedy. But I don't know if the episodic nature of this show helps it or hurts it because if there's like no overarching plot, and I feel like a lot of the comedy in Konosuba has to deal with there like is. they do. It's just it doesn't touch on it. Like at least in Konosuba, there's arcs. Like there's defined arcs. And there's, like, yeah. stakes in those arcs, and then there's, like, character development that happens and stuff. And this show is just kind of, like, every episode is, like, a random grab bag of comedy with, like, a loose plot hanging over it that sometimes gets touched on. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm not, I don't feel, as a result, I don't feel as connected to the characters. Yeah. And I don't think it's for lack of good character. Like, I think Shigure is a really good character. I she hardly Shigure. gets any time to shine. Although yeah. she was great at the end of this episode again with her, like, stealing the sword from him. Yeah, she was like, why? I found another sword. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm like, really? He's not even, like, knocked out. Yeah. Well, he is, but, like... <laughs> She's like, he's still there. <laughs> he's still there. Uh, but I think the biggest weakness for me in this show so far is Genzo. Like, he's hit or miss. Yeah, like... Uh... I don't know. It's just, like... I don't know. I feel like there's just a way to go around him being, like, really into animals. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a way to do it, and then there's, like, a way to do it. And I feel like they're they're being a little too broad with it. Like, I feel like sometimes he's like, oh, my God, I like little dogs. I like taking the creatures, and da-da-da. Like, he has, like, the whole, like, I'm taking care of animals. It's cute. And then there's other times where it's, like, there's clearly more, like, etchiness, a more etchy feel to it. Oh, like, yeah, he's like, perving on them? Yeah. Yeah, like, like when he's his like neighbor. working out the legs, making her work out. He's like, oh, it's not coming your thighs. Okay, we're just going to make you work out your back and abs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like this weird cross between him being a furry. And, but even then, that's like, I'm fine with that. I just feel like his whole character is he loves animals. I, don't know, I, I would appreciate it if he had a bit more to his character, I don't know, to his comedy. Because to me, because who no one else who is so one hit and wonder. But who I love so much? Who? Darkness. She's literally almost the same. And yeah, but even like, but even then, like Darkness has way more personality than Genzo does. Like she has like strengths and weaknesses and things she likes, and like she'll yeah she'll cave into her nature of being a masochist every so often. More often than not. more often than not. But there's like still defining moments where she's just where she could have a really badass moment and she does something cool or. She does something funny outside of just being a masochist or is just, like, put in awkward situations. Like, the episode where uh, uh, Kazuma has the uh, the succubus and she walks into the bathroom naked and he's just with her and he thinks it's a dream and he's, like, trying to have sex with her or something. That was great. And it didn't really have to do with her being a masochist. She was just a dork and confused. Mm. So, yeah. Whereas right. Genzo in those situations is just going to be, like, animals, animals, animals. Yeah, no, you're right. She does have, like, some other moments, like, mm-hmm. outside of her being a masochist. And he's literally just, like, he's that kind of thing. It's like, oh, if you don't do with the animal, I'm not interested. And yeah. honestly, I feel like that hurts his character more than helps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But maybe it's not fair comparing it to Konosuba. Not everything can be a... Uh... Masterpiece, as uh, the pulp fiction writer Roger Avery suggested. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if if we're done here, mm-hmm. you said anything you want to say? Speak of masterpieces. Mm-hmm. Going to my episode of the us... week. Yeah, yeah so everyone's episode of the week, Vinland Saga, episode eighteen. <laughs> Where do I even begin with this? I don't one? know how to feel about this episode. Like, you know, it's episode of the week. I love it. I don't know how to feel about the twist of the episode, the change in personality of um, Canute. the Canute. Yes, like he went from being like, "I'm so scared." I'm gonna do All right, I'm a king now, and everyone's gonna listen to me because I had some fucking revelation, and all of a sudden, I am now the most badass figure in the show. I love it because it came from such a guys believe me as someone who has experienced it a lot trauma is an incredibly powerful yeah. thing <laughs> and this today just highlights it to a T within Canute mm-hmm. like I, I like that it was brought about because of his trauma it's not like it wasn't hinted at because his trauma with uh 
losing his uh, father figure. Losing, yeah, Ragnar. Ragnar. And also, like, I feel like it was probably built to. My only issue with it is I think they kind of... Like, when he walked up to a um, raging berserker shroom guy and is just, like, touching his head and patting him and stuff, and he's not getting his spine ripped in half by this raging, drugged-up Viking, I'm like, eh, it's kind of breaking my suspension of disbelief right here. Yeah. Yes and no. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think... And I think it's one of those things where... Like, you know how people, like, when they drink or they get fucked up, it's mm-hmm. like how they respond is very heavily depending on how you handle them. Like, he went berserk and started fighting those dudes because he saw, like, aggression and was like, all right, I see aggression, time to murder, Mm -hmm. let's kill everything. Meanwhile, like, when you see something in a more docile state, Mm -hmm. like... You know, you'll see actions, and you see this in anime too, where there are people who are raging, and they're less, they're sometimes less likely to attack things that aren't taking on like an aggressive stance. That is a good point. And I think, I think that's very much what they're doing in Villain Saga. So like he just like calmed him. Yes, he was like, I'm coming approaching a docile nature now with a weapon in my hand, Mm. not screaming at you, not yelling. (laughs) Coming to you nice and calm. That's a good point. Um, All right, I, I, I am. <laughs> I allow it. I will yeah, now continue to yeah. finish this episode. Yeah, because that's hap- that happens like all the time when like, people get like really fucked up. Like if you approach them all weird, and they do not appreciate, or if you get all angry and aggressive with them, they do not appreciate it, and they in turn make life a lot harder. They and there's times where you through a tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, that it happened once, mm-hmm. where someone literally went all berserk like that, and then it's like, hey, calm down, da da da, like everything's okay, man. We're cool. You're cool. Let's just, you know, chill. You know, you've had nights where you've had to talk down someone who like clearly fucked up. Well, they weren't necessarily on shrooms killing people, but yes, yeah, not I got shrooms, the but like you know what I mean. Yeah, I get the. Yeah, I, I get, get your point. Thing. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, the change itself, I I loved it. Yeah, him going from like a character, and it's it's funny because normally I hate this type of character because he's all weak and scrawny, and and I would be like, oh, thank God he changed. But like, I didn't mind his weak scrawny version because it was fitting with his character. But I also feel like this change is now infinitely better too. So like, he he went from being an okay character to me to just being like. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna. I'm waiting to see him when I watch these episodes now. Yeah, and also it wasn't that kind of change where it made him all like, I'm emo Sasuke. I'm emo Ur Sasuke. Mm-hmm. No, it was like, okay, well, my faith, like, kind of my faith in God has been crushed because the heart of men are so evil. Mm-hmm. Which I love that. Also, I love that this whole conversation came about like. It was. It wasn't just the trauma. It was like the trauma, um, plus like this. Com- plus with the priest having his own doubts, mm-hmm. who was like, "Oh, this man loved you, but he also like let all these people in this village die just protect you." Yeah, and, and he called his love something else. Not. I'm not saying I agree with. Oh no, the Ow. priest the priest had the spiciest take on love. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know. That was that was the spiciest. <laughs> He's like, that wasn't love, that was discrimination. True love is death. And when he was I saying know. that shit, I was like, yeah. okay, this dude is trying to like convert this guy to the dark side. I went even to pull out his Emperor Palpatine voice and shit. You must join the dark side and kill them all. Kill all the younglings, Anakin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So free them. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the priest is clearly... See, the priest is, like, Sasuke now. <laughs> and, but, like, homeboy isn't just like, all right, well... Unlike you, who just succumbed to despair and, like, is drinking himself to death, I'm actually going to mm. attempt to do something about it and try to make this world a better place. I like that uh, another thing is all these people are trying to manipulate uh, Canute since he showed up. 
like between Ragnar and uh, Asklad and Thorkel wants to trade him off, and Manu like all these people vying for him, and the one who has the biggest impact on him is just the priest fucking yeah. sitting down drinking. Like you even like, have to try, and it's, and it's such a bizarre like circumstances. Mm -hmm. Like the whole the whole thing was bizarre. Like they're literally just sitting down having this very like meta conversation. Mm. Meanwhile, they're literally watching this dude just raging on mushrooms, beating up people, like, killing these men. It really and says a lot about the show that that could happen. Like, this crazy dude raging, beating the shit out of people, and also the fight between uh, Thorkel and Thorfinn is happening. Yet the most interesting part of this episode is still the talk between the priest and uh, Canute. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, that is, like, the best part. Mm -hmm. All that stuff was also very great. But it was, like, it was, like, really good filler for, mm. like, an even better, like, main point of yeah, the Yeah, the payoff was so, so good. It was so oh good. My God. Like, even just seeing him, like, kind of, like, after, uh, I keep reading his name, get stabbed, um, and, and he's just, like, Canute's, like, up. Oh, bandage him up and take care of him and they're like uh we were just killing each other and then he's like don't worry about your petty squabbles i'll give you something I, i'll give you a real fight to throw your lives away at come follow exactly. me like he's that just so, so awesome that was so cool and then i love when you can like i love that you can like see the uh, like you can see the change like throughout the entire episode mm -hmm. it is it's definitely there and it's like you can see that shift, like when he's like crying, like he's crying, but his face is different. Like yeah. you can see that when he had tears in his eyes, but his face like noticeably mm -hmm. changed. Yeah, it was really awesome. And then, like, I like that he's commanding all these people. He's not like he's the only one there who's literally not a warrior. Like he has no fighting capability whatsoever. Yet he's like so much presence of power and his voice and his little cool wave of his cape and everything that he has so yeah. much charisma and everything that they're like fuck it we're gonna follow this guy even though he has no physical power of us exactly. so it's like the true moniker of a king that he can lead people with just his presence and not his exactly. fighting abilities so just like uh so once again it just everything just it, it's still we're still very much on a uh what you call it on a spiral I'm crash course. No, no, no. A thing where they leave you off at a point. Tangent. No, they, at the end of the episode. Really, cliffhanger. Thank you. I was like, cliff something. <laughs> it's not with a cliff. Um, yeah, literally a huge cliffhanger because the fight with Dorkel has not, has definitely like switched up mm. as a. Uh, you know, Thorfinn loses his. He was first doing the thing, but then he like loses his cool after mm -hmm. he like at the Dorkel quotes his dad, and then homeboy literally punts that motherfucker like a football. Yeah, he just kicked him through the goalposts. Yep. Mm hmm. That's that's three points for <laughs> Team Thorkel. Uh, I'm gonna make a prediction, and uh, it's going to be that Asklad is going to get killed. By um, Canute. Like, I feel like Canute's gonna show up there and be like, he's, we definitely know he's gonna find out what happened to Ragnar. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna think he's gonna show up and be like, you kill Ragnar because he's smart enough to put two and two together and just order him executed. I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. Especially if he has the, uh, the, you know, affection of uh, the other dude since he healed his wounds and everything. He might just, like, snitch on him um, uh, so that'd be interesting but intrigue and it would make sense that because Asklad is like the old guard leadership he's like I was a leader and now everyone's mutinying against him and now uh, Knut's kind of stepping up as a leader he's gonna be like we don't need you anymore peace <laughs> bye <laughs> and of course he'll probably get Thorkel on his side and be like hey fuck my dad right let's go kill him <laughs> <laughs> Thor kills gonna be like I can kill people yeah let's go you say murder <laughs> yeah and then, and then Thor is gonna be like bleeding out and be like oh, I guess I got no choice I gotta go with these guys <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Thor yeah 
God, I keep being awesome, uh, Vinland Saga. Keep yeah. being awesome. God, can, like, the n- wait, they have a next season of Golden Kamei, right? Season 3? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just hope Blood is probably not going to come out next season. But no. come out soon. Mm-hmm. Come out soon. I just, like, I just want back-to-back of these. Yeah, we need these forward. types of shows. We need, like, this Attack on Titan and Golden Kamei. Let's just literally have effective. stuff like this, but just in different parts of the world. Like, yeah. Let's have one where it's, like, in, like, I don't know, Canada or, like, Mexico, but, like, in during the times of, like, the Aztecs. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind, like, a, a cowboy-themed one either, like the Wild Wild West or something. Mm, That'd be pretty what's cool. What's the one in Africa? Ooh, tribes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we're done throwing, pitching our Pitching story, all our ideas. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the last enemy of the night, which is Fire Force Episode 17. Yeah... Can you believe it? There was actual intrigue in this episode. So, can I just say, this anime is really trying... Like, they're really trying to be Shaft. They're literally just trying to be Shaft. I feel like it's always the case when Fibana shows up, though. They, like, make it an effort to make all the imagery nice and shit. Like, they, like no. They have it. They're weird. They're trying to adopt these weird quirks. And they're just like, you know, either they get it or they don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel like. Whenever they did I a lot of interesting them. shadowy things in the, um, mm-hmm. like, when they were in the hospital and, and all that shit. There was, like, darks yeah. and oranges and stuff. It looked like it was straight out of Monica. And then, once again, they did that scene where they're talking. Hibana's, you just see her mouth. Half of her face is gone. You just see her mouth as they're having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Until they do a close-up. And I'm like... So I think you bitches are doing this on purpose. <laughs> I, I still don't care for it. I still don't like it. They're definitely doing a stylistic choice. Um, yeah. This was a good episode, though, Ron. I'm, I'm really liking the direction this arc is taking the story because I actually, I, I, for once in my life while watching Fire Force, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen next. <laughs> because now we have Victor, what's his name, Licked? Was it Victor Lick? Oh, yeah. The yeah, crazy Lick. guy. Lick. Lick. Yeah, we we don't, you know, we were pretty set on him being evil, which I'm still set on him being evil, but we don't he know is. which, which for, side of he the evil for, he is. The, the, was it Hajima? Hajima? Yeah, the Joker guy. No, not Joker guy. Oh, you think he works for Joker? I think he works for Joker. I can see that happening. See, that's see what that. I mean. We don't know. For yeah, once, it's a, Fire Force is not throwing its, its fucking exposition down our throat and showing us all the cards in its hand for once yeah like when first of all shinra's brother show coming up and literally fucking everyone shut up oh he has such awesome sword moves too it's just like beautiful flowers everywhere then person's dead yeah although i am gonna be really upset how they're going to try to use fire to explain that bullshit oh yeah if he it's uses going... fire to teleport to slow down time like he is uh, he, he makes everything so hot that he blows everyone's brain <laughs> oh my god they, they can be like you know what they're gonna say they're like he see he absorbs the heat from everything and slows down the molecules so much that he actually alters time because oh, the molecules I, are yep, moving yep, so yep, slowly i'm calling it now <laughs> no that makes sense Perfect sense. I mean, it, does. it doesn't make any sense at all, but it makes sense for the show's logic. It makes sense for, for anime. They're like, we don't want to think any like And the girl was like, my flames are magnetic. I'm like, yeah, how? What? <laughs> also, your girl. flames are just like tentacles because they don't burn, apparently. They just wrap around shit. Whatever. And they like sure. physically lift things. <laughs> sure, girl. Sure, Dan. <laughs> Um, oh my god but yeah but then like shows like messing everyone up just beating up everyone mm-hmm. and then they're like trying to escape from him and then out of nowhere joker appears and then they start fighting yeah there was so much shit happening also uh shows reminds me of virgil from devil may cry very strong virgil vibe he's a brother he has a fucking katana he slows down time and does all these cool fucking katana things white hair he's virgil yeah, uh, yeah, Virgil, but fire. But fire. Um, the plot itself, uh, interesting. I like that the, uh, of course, the Vulcan joined the um, Fire Force uh, Ape yeah, Squad. Sexy ass, better join. Fire Force. <laughs> um, 
fighting was excellent. The animation was excellent. Everything about this episode was just on point, which is good. Yeah, I like I like when Tachibana was like subduing everyone, and then even Arthur, and then she's like, "Eh, you're all just trash. You're mm-hmm. all gravel to me." And then she ends up getting knocked out by like a random flying. Cat. Yeah, they had just like little bits of comedy here and there. Like there was one point where she's all the stuff is flying down, like all the animals, and it's like humping. The dude's shoulder is like a deer on his shoulder humping yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so it's finally getting its groove. I feel like now it's finally setting in where it has all interesting villains. Uh, Giovanni's interesting. Show's interesting. Joker's interesting. I don't know what's happening. There's like people all over on different sides. So it's yeah. finally settling into its place. Um, I feel like this is one of those animes where it's like it's just better off if you binge it yeah very much like black clover yeah at watching it i feel like a lot of shonens are like that yeah yeah very much very much this as well at least no in the beginning binging it is important because mm-hmm. then later on episodically it's fine like black clover like i did binge i just did binge but like the all the episodes i saw were like they're all decent <laughs> like mm-hmm. well ish give or take <laughs> Yeah. I just like Noel. That's all. I think like, only... finally a good. Sorry, no, I'm I'm going on a tangent. Continue. <laughs> the only the only weak part of the show, I think, probably was just the uh, last arc we had, which is kind of long. So it was a pretty long stint of the show, but still, so far yeah. the other arcs I've been liking. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, that is all I have to say about that good episode. Yep, good episode. And if you think this was a good episode of the GNA Podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can catch us weekly. Um, Also, do make sure to uh, follow us over on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and join the party on our Discord. If you want, you can even donate to us on Patreon, like all these lovely people on screen right now who also are able to, uh, a lot of them, joined us for the Babylonia Live Watch, uh, which we hold with our patrons every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to join us for that and watch Babylonia and get our live reactions to that and talk with us, then you can uh, head on over to our Patreon for that or become a YouTube sponsor. Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? I want to give a special thanks to everyone that we saw that attended Anime NYC mm-hmm. this year. It was such fun. Very hectic, but because there's a there's just a lot of people. Like when I tell you, the whole gang pulled up. Yeah, it truly it was, did. It was huge. But every single one of you, I enjoyed meeting. It was very nice seeing you all. I hope you had a good time because I sure know I did. Same. It was great seeing you guys. Thanks for heading on out over there. And if you missed Anime NYC, we do have a video coming out soon. They'll go over our coverage and our reactions and everything. So be on the lookout for that as well. If you can, give that a watch. Um, but until next week, this has been Soberoni and... Juby Doo. Catch you guys later. Later. Bye.